Okay guys, moment of truth and now we're gonna show you or we're gonna attempt to prove Kepler's first law. The most difficult of, of all the three laws but we're gonna try and give it a good shot. Okay, now before we start, I just would like to say that in trying to find a certain proof of this law, I noticed that Kepler's law is written in a lot of books, physics books, some mechanics books and also mathematics and calculus books. Okay, and when I was looking through some of the, the physics proofs, it didn't really give one that is really conclusive in terms of using differential equations or even the differential calculus, okay? It did show a proof, however, it wasn't as mathematical rigorous as the one that I liked or at least the one that I was looking for and I'm gonna present to you now. And in, in learning that and in observing that, okay, I noticed that there's a certain joy if you study mathematics or there's a certain joy in really knowing mathematics and how we can use it to prove the other science okay because you see in physics they you know really say that okay this is how the forces are created okay what is the temperature like you know what is the the direction the the planetary waves i don't know but in mathematics it's like we are given the data we're given the differential equations and knowing what we are knowing in terms of the quantified values we will use that to prove a certain law and that, I guess, is where the value of mathematicians come in, you know, and if you share that, you know, maybe it's great that you want to, you know, be one, want to consider being one, okay? So, basically, the main objective of this lesson is apply a rigorous mathematical treatment in deriving Kepler's first law. To recap Kepler's first law is that a planet moves around the sun in an elliptical orbit as opposed to a circular orbit, okay? So now, we got the equations of motion from the preliminaries. We got the one over here where fr, the magnitude of fr is given by this thing over here. What is fr? fr is basically the scalar constant, okay, that is, is multiplied to give you the force, okay, that goes from the sun to the small earth, okay? There's a certain force, okay, and fr is in direction of that line segment, okay, the scalar multiple. And then on top of that, we got this small little equation over here that really facilitates us to get to the first law, which is highly useful, and let's just keep that in mind. Okay, so Newton, Sir Isaac Newton, okay, says that the gravitational force between two planets is given by this. F is equal to minus G, where G is a constant, big M, small m, divided by R squared, where R squared is the distance between the two. So R, sorry, R is the distance between the two. So it's over here like this. This R happens to correspond to, to be the same as the R over here, but it has to because that's how we define the axis in the preliminaries, okay? So that is Newton's law of gravitation. Now, we're gonna simplify it a bit by putting a minus and we're gonna put a k small m r squared. What's the reason for that? It's just to simplify the algebra where k is equals to big M and, sorry, big uh, constant g and big M, okay? Both of them are constant, mass of the planet, mass of the sun, and gravitational constant. So knowing that this is the force, we can just simply equate this to the to the equations of motion that we have over here. So we got small m, okay, and we got d2r dt2 take away r d theta dt square that and close bracket. So this is equal to this. We can cancel out the mass, okay, because they're the same, and then we can just take away the bracket over here, and this is the equation that we are going to deal with, okay? A small little equation, but Kepler's first law is hidden somewhere in there, so let's see whether we can find it out. Now, a few things to take in mind. Now, now, remember, our objective is to find that equation, the equation of motion of the, of the Earth around the Sun, and suspecting is going to be elliptical. So here are a few objectives. The objective number one, I want to try to express R in terms of a function of theta. Make sense? Because, like I said, theta is over here, it sweeps out the angle, so I want to try to express r as a function of theta, hoping that this one will give me the ellipsis, the elliptical orbit. Okay, um, objective number two is that we want to eliminate time. We want to eliminate time. Okay, because, like I said, we just want to theta over here. Objective number three, r is the dependent variable, okay, dependent variable, and likewise, theta is the independent variable. Okay, so these are a few objectives and we are going to try our best to do that. Okay, a lot of good calculus techniques or at least differential calculus techniques is needed. So let's see whether we can do that over there. Okay, now, R is at the bottom, right? So we would suggest 
debt, we want to introduce another variable, okay, to simplify the algebra a bit. That variable, we'll just call it z, okay, where z is 1 divided by r. No big thing yet, there's no big change, we're just introducing the variable z to simplify the algebra. Okay, now, we, won't, we then need to handle this thing over here like so, okay, and that is our first course of action, okay. DR, D, so we're differentiating R twice with respect to time. So let's differentiate once, see what we get. Okay, it equals to DT and it's 1 over Z, correct, okay? 1 over Z, okay? Because we're using the substitution. Why are we using the substitution? Because we've got R squared over here. We want to simplify the algebra. So we've got this thing over here and then we can just simply use differential rules, okay? And by chain rule, so it's, we'll differentiate this, then we have to differentiate this with respect to time, okay? But we need to differentiate that with respect to theta first, okay? And then d theta dt, okay? I hope that makes sense. See, we, are, we need to differentiate this with respect to time. So we will do chain rule, then after that we need to have the dz dt, right? But I want to introduce the chain rule theta because remember, our goal is to preserve the theta. We need to have a theta over there, or at least that's a way to advance in the calculations, okay? And there's also another reason that I'm going to do that, okay? And that is this one over here. I can now use this substitution and eliminate the d, t, d theta dt from this small tiny equation that we have over here. So d theta dt is equals to h divided by r squared, which is equals to h z squared. That is where the substitution comes in over here. h times z squared. So basically, this one now becomes h z squared square and uh, d z z d theta, okay? Yep, I'm making this substitution over here. The z squared eliminates and now I got minus h d z d theta, okay? That is nice and neat so far. Now, I'm gonna have to differentiate this a second time, correct? Because we're finding the second derivative, so I'm gonna differentiate this a second time. It's basically differentiating this, differentiating what we had just now, with respect to time, okay? So we are going to differentiate this now, likewise over here, with respect to time. Okay, looking at it, what we have? We have product rule comes in, okay? Let's keep the h first, differentiate this with respect to time, okay? Now, here it's the part where it gets a bit tricky, okay? I'll just write it out first. dt, dz, okay, differentiate this with respect to time. Now, I'm going to plus, but when I differentiate h with respect to time, h is a constant, I get 0. So I'll just leave that on one side. Let's focus on this thing over here. Okay, minus h. Now, I'm going to differentiate dz d theta with respect to time. Now, time obviously is not inside there. But what I can do is that I can differentiate this thing first with respect to theta, okay? And by doing that, I get the second derivative, okay? You'll see why later, and it, and it fits in very nicely. However, I still need to do the same chain rule method and differentiate time with, diff, differentiate theta with respect to time and multiply the two together. But that is okay because I got my secret little formula over here where d theta dt is equal to this one over here, okay? So now, I will just get minus h, okay? I will get a, the, the second derivative of dz d theta and I'll just multiply by h z squared. There we go, okay? That is good. And then now I can substitute this one over here like so. Okay, now I will write minus h squared, okay, z squared, d2z, d theta 2, okay, then I minus, okay, likewise d theta dt, let's use the same substitution, okay, use the same substitution, so I got r, okay, or let's convert the r for now to be 1 over, one over z, by the change in variable, 1 over z, that one will give me h squared z4, okay, and it's equals to minus kz squared, okay? That is one heck of an equation, okay?